so you i mean you, you wear it at night i mean it's comfortable enough to wear at night i assume if it's tracking your yes sleep. it's super comfy okay uh so does it help you sleep i mean does it provide any kind of help to you to in, get you into a better sleep mode totally because tracking your sleep is awesome but not very useful if you can't do anything about it hmm. so um muse s is a super comfortable headband it's like this, but it's a fabric version. Um, and it has amazing sensor capability that's able to track your sleep, as I said, as effectively as a sleep lab. And then what we do is we have something called the digital sleeping pill. So you don't have to take, you know, Ambien or other things that are not good for you. This is a biofeedback experience that actually can help walk your brain into sleep. So what you're doing is you fall asleep with the muse on, listening to a uh, story or guided meditation or a soundtrack and the muse is tracking your state of wakefulness and as it starts to see that you're starting to tip into a little bit of n1 sleep the first stage of sleep it changes the audio you're listening to in a way that's designed to help the brain fall asleep and then as it sees that you've moved into n2 it can turn off the audio so it doesn't wake you up again and then you're nicely into deep sleep. And if you happen to wake up in the middle of the night, Muse detects that change in wakefulness and then brings in the same beautiful story or audio experience that you had the first time and helps you fall back asleep again. So it's mm -hmm. completely amazing. A study by Dr. Adrian Owen at uh, Western University demonstrated that Muse meditation and digital sleeping pill improve sleep quality by 20% including helping people fall asleep faster and fall back asleep when you've woken up in the night. And then does it give you a report in the morning to say how much deep sleep, oh. all that? Yeah. Of course. So okay. you get a report in the morning um, with a lot more than your sleep. So very accurate sleep staging, um, things that are worn on your ring finger or on your wrist, those can only stage four stages of sleep. This is five stage sleep staging, so super accurate. Um, and then you also see your position, your heart rate, um, not only how much deep sleep, but the depth of your deep sleep. So it really gives you incredible insights into what goes on in the mind when you're not mm -hmm. awake. Okay, so can I ask you, so what do you do to kind of, maintain your brain in the best best state um so i mean and i that would include kind of everything really anything yep. that you do to uh, maintain your brain so interestingly maintaining your brain is not that different than maintaining your body mm -hmm. because your brain has a whole bunch of arteries and veins that run through it in the exact same way that your heart does so when we worry about clogging up our arteries and having heart attacks. Well, stroke is an equivalent to clogging up the arteries of your brain and having a brain attack, a stroke, an ischemic event. So all the things that we are doing for ourselves, for our bodies, like exercise, eating well, sleeping, these are all key for our brain as well. So when you think, you know, what are the best things that I can do for your brain health? Start with those. Meditation is also key for the health of our brain. And uh, you asked earlier, how long does one have to meditate to actually see the difference? From this very cool study by Dr. Eileen Luters, um, she looked at the brains of long-term meditators and she defined a long-term meditator as somebody who'd meditated for five years or more. She put them in an MRI machine and she was able to determine that their brains looked on average 7.5 years younger than non-meditators. So at least five years of meditation in the study demonstrated led to 7.5 year decrease in brain age, um, which is amazing. So meditation is on the list of things to do to maintain the brain. Um, so for me personally, I meditate, I exercise, I eat well, I you know limit the amount of white breads and sugars. And I don't, lim I, I currently, I have a baby I'm nursing. Um, so I'm not limiting my saturated fats, but you should really limit saturated fats. They are not good for your brain, just like they're not good for your heart. Um, no trans fats, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and then foods that are good for your brain are fish oils, 
Mm-hmm. Now, fish oil uh, DHA is very powerful for a few reasons. One, because it's anti-inflammatory. And just like you want to reduce inflammation in your body, you want to reduce inflammation in your brain. And DHA is also the molecule that covers um, your axons. So some of your axons are super coated with something called a myelin sheath. And this myelin sheath allows information to travel in your brain at long distances without the information leaking out. So it's kind of like the plastic casing along a telephone wire. And that myelin sheath is made up of DHA. Mm-hmm. And DHA is something that we primarily need to get from external food sources. So you want to be having fish, taking fish oil to make sure that you have sufficient amounts of DHA to repair your myelin as you mm-hmm. age. Uh, so DHA is like omega-3, right? The, the omega-3. Exactly. DHA, yeah. DHA is omega-3. So omega-3 is DHA, um, EPA, and some other stuff. So you want to actually really make sure that you're focusing on getting DHA as well as all of the other stuff in it. Right. And sleep. Uh, What's your sleep routine? So I'm lucky. I'm a really good sleeper. Mm -hmm. Um, Nonetheless, I still do all the things that you need to do to have good sleep. So that means before you go to bed, close the curtains, don't have any light. Mm -hmm. Um, don't have caffeine. I actually never have caffeine. I have a tiny bit of dark chocolate in the morning, but don't have caffeine mm-hmm. afternoon because even when you think the caffeine's not affecting you, chances are it is. And as we age, we become more caffeine sensitive. So even mm-hmm. if in the twenties, your twenties, you could, you know, have an espresso and fall asleep. That may not be the case anymore in your forties, fifties, sixties. So mm-hmm. limit caffeine afternoon like 12 o'clock because it takes a long time to break down longer than you think. Um, I also make sure that I get exercise every day, which both helps me sleep longer, um, Mm. increases something called BDNF brain drive neurotropic factor. And of course, reduces inflammation systemically in the body and generally is great for your health in basically every week you can think of. And then I sleep consistently at the same time each night. So, you know, one of the, biggest ways to train your brain to sleep is to have a predictable routine there where each aspect of the routine becomes a sleep cue. So maybe if you want to go to bed at 10 o'clock every night by 9 30, you are turning off the lights or dimming the lights so that you begin to cue your brain to make more melatonin. Um, You actually want to start the process 90 minutes before bed to dim those lights um, because melatonin, uh, it takes about 90 minutes to accumulate before it puts you to sleep deeply. So you want to be dimming your lights, doing quiet, calming things. Meditations are always great. You can slip on your muse. Your muse has to go to sleep, or you can do a meditation without it, or you can lie with your eyes closed and breathe deeply. Um, and then for me, 10 o'clock, I'm asleep. Um, you know, in bed, lights go off, everything away. And then I wake up pretty consistently at 5.30 in the morning because I have a little baby that (laughs) chooses to wake me up then. So I know (laughs) I need to go to bed at 10 in order to be woken up. Yeah, I I was going to say, because you you said you had a a young child. I mean, it must be kind of tricky to get a uh, regular sleep with that, with with a young child. But So um, sleep training was key with both my children. I was right on top of sleep training from four months on. And that really allowed everybody to ultimately get a good night's sleep. And she wakes up early and there's not much you can do about that. And Mm. so for me, you know, it's really about adjusting my own schedule to make sure that I'm prioritizing sleep um, in a way that's going to work with her schedule. Right. Okay. So thank you so much. Can you tell me, uh, so can you tell people where they can find out more information about Muse and any, uh, and your current work? Oh, sure. So you can always, you can see what I've been talking about and find out more at choosemuse.com, C-H-O-O-S-E-M-U-S-E.com. And you can find out uh, some of the studies that have been done with Muse. We have a blog with lots of information on meditation And then I co-host a podcast called Untangle, the Mm -hmm. Untangle podcast. And we 
interview uh, meditation experts, neuroscientists, and people who really give you ways to live better lives. So you can also check out the Untangle podcast. And Excellent. I believe uh, there's a discount code for the audience as well um, mm -hmm. for a discount on Muse and uh, some other yeah. free benefits probably. Right. Yes, we will put the discount code into the description. And yeah, I, I, thank you so much. That was, uh, and the podcast sounds really interesting too. Uh, definitely worth checking out. So thank you. thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, my joy and pleasure. I, I'm happy to come on anytime and talk more about the brain and how we can live our best lives by optimizing.